So, jetzt geht's weiter mit Maranz, wo ich den Gary treffe. Der soll technisch jetzt auch ein Deep Diving ermöglichen. Ich bin mal gespannt. Wir geben ihm eine Chance. Er wartet da drüben auf uns, hat uns gerade ein paar Leute verscheucht. Leg mal mal los. Yep. 145. Okay, also bei Maranz interessieren wir uns natürlich gerade hier für die neuen Pre-Pro-Komponenten, die da sind. Und dann legen wir gleich mal los, wenn der Gary hier mit dem Mann, der eine me, wunderbare Jacke hat. Also die Jacke ist ein lebendes Testbild. Einfach fand. Wir müssen mal fragen, ob die Jacke... Did you ask him whether this jacket is made for SDR or, or HDR? Yeah, it's a good question, yeah. <laughs> so We basically, have to check the gamut. <laughs> that's Gary. Uh, what's your position at Sound United? I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager at Marantz in Class A. Oh, fills out a lot of space on your business card. It does. It's the longest title in the entire company. Oh, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> well, and this is supposed to be the most sophisticated product of your Marantz based um, product line. It is. Yeah, this is our new flagship AV processor. This comes in above the AV8805. So it's a new flagship entry for us. Uh, it can handle 15.4 channel processing. Um, as you can see inside, uh, we have a completely modular design. Uh, every channel has entirely new HDAM SA3 uh, analog channels. Um, there's a new Griffin processing DSP. It's fully balanced so from it's end not to end. tied to the architecture of AV8805? Uh, no. It's completely no, it's new development? Entirely new development, yes. Okay, that's cool. Yep. Um, Do you have any information why Marantz actually chose to use Direct and Odyssey, or whether they consider Odyssey to be the more entry-oriented um, room acoustic treatment? Or it's not necessarily a matter of entry level versus uh, you know more sophisticated. We okay. offer Odyssey XT32 as a built-in feature, so if somebody wants to buy the AV10 off the shelf, they can do Odyssey XT32 calibration and mm -hmm. then also buy the the optional Odyssey apps if they want to build their own curves. Uh, for those of us that want, um, shall we say, like infinite flexibility, uh, we can go to Dirac Live and you know, build target curves per channel independently. Um, if you already have a target curve, perhaps from your old home theater that you want to apply to the new AV10, of course, you can bring those target curves over. Uh, the, the Dirac Live is a paid upgrade and that mm -hmm. becomes available in March. So uh, an Odyssey comes free. So it's really just whichever you're most comfortable with. Do you already have some information regarding the pricing of DREC upgrades? We do. Um, I haven't got it in euros, but uh, in the US, the uh, the band limited version of Dirac Live will be available for $259 plus the microphone cost. And okay. then the full band version will be available for $349. Do you know whether it's um, mandatory to use a microphone purchased by Sound United or whether it could, could no, of course not. Yeah, any, any uh, USB mic that has calibration curves can be used. Okay, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's great. Do you know how many setup profiles are supported in this device? Two. Two? Yeah. Okay. Why didn't they chose to go for more? For example, you know, when in living rooms um, installing these products, you typically use more than just two setups? Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting question. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I imagine it has to do with the memory slot capacity mm -hmm. that we have. But uh, I think that when you get up to this level of product, you're no longer having to make compromises in terms of sound quality. So with something like this, I think it's okay to build maybe like one target curve that has a, perhaps a bit of bass boost maybe for action movies, and then something else that tends towards a bit more neutral for um, your romantic comedies and your yeah. music videos and that type of thing. So. Okay, that's pretty sure. By the way, I was very impressed when first getting a glimpse of the product uh, regarding the craftsmanship. This is very solid made, in my opinion. It is. Um, yeah. AV10 is built entirely at our factory in Shirokawa, Japan. Uh, we have machined aluminum and anodized uh, front panels. We have the same three-piece construction that we adapted from our Hi-Fi products. Uh, the chassis itself is a three-layer design, so it's it's really quite thick. And uh, even the toroidal transformer sits on its own isolation plate. So yeah, it's a very, very robust build. Yeah, it's, it's very impressive. Do you know whether those lighting will be switchable between different colors or is it always white or blue or yeah so we have a uh, we have an option to go to blue if you have uh, like older pm tens you know for your amplification system or something like that um, there's a switch on the front of uh, amp 10 for that but uh, there's no such switch on the front for av10 so that's something we'll need to manage in software so which is the default color white white okay but you can dim it in certain steps of course yeah 
If uh, you have it inside the theater room, for example, you might want it off. Um, if it's in like a dark closet, perhaps you want it at the dim level. If it's more out in the open, you can run it at full range. Do you know whether there will be a new remote for this device or is it a common one? There is a new remote. Um, I haven't got one here to share, but it follows the same design as our Model 30 and SACD30N, where we have an anodized aluminum top panel. Uh, it's got a nice hefty weight and it has built-in white backlighting behind all the buttons. Mm -hmm. Did you already have the chance to hear this one? I Anyone? have. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. How do you rate this compared to the AV8085, uh, given the fact that the um, actual Marantz processor is more on the softer side of the acoustic. Is this one more orientated in crisp, clear sounds or neutral or studio-like sounds or I more? I think it, it, still, it still very much has the Marantz sound profile, but with the new developments in our HDAM, we've been able to reduce distortion at the higher output levels quite substantially. So overall, I think that gives it a much more dynamic and robust sound than we've been able to achieve in previous products. Sounds very compelling, actually. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the... Um, Amplification. As far as I know, this is the only one and single amplifier that is supposed to be combined with the processor. So you don't offer four, uh, two, five, and seven channels anymore, at least in, in futuristic scope. We, uh, at the moment, we still offer our legacy uh, multi-channel amplifiers as well. Um, obviously, because the products have balanced inputs and outputs, uh, you can use a, uh, a different set of amplifiers with AV10 if you like. You can use a different surround processor with AMP10. But as a combination, the, the product is extremely compelling. So that we think that most customers will buy one of each and, and connect them together. Uh, what let Marantz chose this structure uh, class D design rather than using class AB as we've seen with other devices so far? There, there are several reasons. First of all, our flagship Hi-Fi products have been able to achieve a level of performance using a class D topology that we simply haven't been able to achieve with class AB in the past. So that's uh, in terms of power output, uh, in terms of low distortion, um, you know, dynamic range. So you know, we've been able to achieve very, very high performance with class D. The second reason is if we tried to build a 16 channel amplifier where every channel is rated at 200 watts into one chassis with class AB, it would be impossible for one man to unpack. It would weigh okay. 100 kilos or more, right? Okay. So uh, so there's a practical element to using class D in a single channel amp with so many channels as well. Okay. And given that not many customers actually use 16 channels, this one is highly configurable. I, I read. That's exactly right. So we have 16 channels. Uh, we can run separate signals into each, but we can also run it in a bi-amp mode. So in bi-amp mode, uh, you take a single channel input and you get two identical outputs. So you can run the base section for a loudspeaker on one output, the high frequency channel uh, on another output, but there's also a bridge tied load mode. Uh, so with, within that bridged mode, you can build uh, eight uh, channels that have 400 watts output. So in that way, if you have a very large room or you have very high SPL ambitions, you've got the, the power to support it. Do you know the overall maximum power consumption of this one? Uh, I do not off the top of my head, but I believe it will saturate a, a 20 amp circuit. Uh, okay, yeah. that's interesting. Any information whether Marantz is going to launch a competing product to the big Denon? Oh, the, the, their, uh, their full size receiver? Yes. It's not something that we have on the roadmap, no. Okay. Yeah. And any successor to SR8015 yet? Not yet. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. So basically, that's very good news from our runs. We're very much looking forward to get these ones in our demo to be able to, to hear them. And um, well, thank you so much for this uh, valuable information. Oh, thank you. I hope you enjoy it as much as we have. Absolutely. Totally. Good. Thanks. All right.